Alright, welcome back. In this video, we are going to look at a binary equation. In fact, I first introduced you in our previous video. Now, what we have done so far is, in fact, this one too is under first order differential equation, right? But the first one we do is dealing with the linear equation. The linear equation standard form is always like this. It's always something like this. Now this was the linear equation. Alright? You see that here, the y here, the power is 1. The power is 1. That's why we are saying that this is the first order linear differential equation. So we are going to a case whereby the power is not 1, but rather more than 1. So that is what we are going to look at it right now. Then, there is a man called Bernoulli. Bernoulli that discovered the method in solving the equation in search for. Alright, so the non-linear differential equation of the form, so you are going to get h in the form dy ds plus p of x multiplying the y. Uh, which is equal to now, this satisfies for a linear, di linear differential equation, alright? Because it's the same as the one in the linear differential equation. But let's look at the right hand side. The right hand side, if you get rid of this, this is the linear binary equation. So, any binary equation is a non-linear equation. So, take note of that. And that is in the form of this. So if it's in the form of this, then that is called the binary equation. All right. Now, there is a restriction. That is, the n can never be equal to zero. This n, therefore n, can never be equal to zero. And it can never be equal to one. Tell me, for it to be equal to one, what will happen? Now, you can see that First of all, for the n to be equal to zero, this will be can one. And when one multiply the p of x, it's still the same thing. So when this is zero, it becomes a linear differential equation. And when the n is one, that even spoil the game. <laughs> that will even spoil the game because it should be one raised to the power one. Alright? And that will not make any sense as far as this is concerned. Alright, so the restriction is that n can never be equal to 0 and can never be equal to 1. Alright, for, for a binary in this form, that means that for a binary you have to, if you are finding the general equation, you have to first leave it in this form. Alright, so this is a standard form. This is a standard form. This is the standard form. So when you are giving this equation, then you are going to set or let V. It depends on you, you can choose U or anything. Set V to be equal to Y raised to the power 1 minus N. So it's going to be 1 minus whatever is here. The N can be 2, can be 3, can be 4, alright? That is that. Now, we have only two ways in determining whether an equation is a non-linear differential equation or a binary e equation. Alright. And the two terms, one is one with what you see the equation to be in terms of y. And secondly, the equation will be in terms of y raised to the power n. And as I said, n can be 2, 3, 4, 5, or whatever. Very good. So, that is how we identify the binary equations. So, let's move on to solve our first question. Alright, don't forget first form, second, and that. But please, I would like to add it before I print it. When you said B to be equal to Y, Y minus X, the next thing that you have to do is that you have to make y the subject. 
alright? Because at the end of this call, we are going to do the substitution back to our equation. So you are going to make y the subject, and after making the y the subject, then you take the derivative to find the dy dx. In fact, let's look at the first question we see. Alright, so this is our first question. What the first thing to do? The first thing to do is to check whether you are in the form dy ds plus p of s multiply y is equal to y raised to the power s. And sorry, p of s y raised to the power s. You check whether you are in that form. And know that the n cannot be equal to zero, it cannot be equal to one. So looking at this, let's be in that form dy ds minus you see the one, whatever multiplying the y should come to the left hand side. So we get minus y is equal to y raised to the power 3. Then we identify that the p of s will be equal to negative 1. I hope you can see that. Then the p of s will be equal to 1. Alright. So that is that for that for this part. Very good. Then I'm going to use it. I will just identify a for you. Alright. Now the next thing to do, now let's move this standard form. The next thing to do is to let or uh, is to set our V. So we let V to be equal to Y raised to the power 1 minus N. And that is 3. Alright, because the N is 3. So yeah, the n is 3. Then we get b to be equal to y raised to the power negative 2. Now, the next thing to do is to make the y the subject. So, to set b, b is equal to 1 minus n, 3. Make Make y the subject. So we have v to be equal to 1 over y squared. Therefore, we get v y squared is equal to 1. Therefore, we get y squared is equal to 1 over v. Then, Y will be equal to 1 over square root of V. Alright? So this is y, y equal to V raised to the power 1 over 2. Very good. So now that we have our V, then see, we will now come and do substitution to the standard form of the binary. We need to get our dy ds. Not forgetting that we have y already. So this is our y. So we need to go for dy ds. So dy ds is 
going to be, let's leave it, well, you know that this is the same as B raised to the power negative 2. We need to raise the power negative half, so dy dx is equal to multiply this by the whole of this. Then you subtract, you subtract one from this. Alright? And when you do that, you get 3 over 2. Then you differentiate the inside. Because we are differentiating as respect to x. And the function we have here is b. So this becomes an implicit. This becomes an implicit. So we write dv ds. dv ds. Very good. Very good. So now we have equation 1, equation 2. This is dy y, the function of y, and this is the derivative of the y, which is the dy ds. So the next thing we are going to do is that we are going to do the substitution back into the standard form of the binary equation. Alright, so by substitution, by sub substitution, we are going to get, we are going to write the y ds first. All right, minus y, and the y we have here is this. Which is equal to All right, so that is what we have. Now, the next thing that we are going to do is going to be interesting. What we are going to do is going to be interesting. Let's simplify this more. This is the same as negative half v negative 3 over 2 dv ds minus v raised to the power negative half is equal to v negative 3 over 2. Alright. So yeah. What we are going to do is that, you see, this is a binary. This is a binary. But we want to make it linear. We want to make it linear. So a linear differential equation. So that we can use whether the first method, that is called the Deming coefficient, or the second method, which is integrating factor, to find the general solution. So that is the reason why we are doing all this by first setting our p, then making y the subject and taking the derivative of the y to do the substitution. Therefore, me and you is aware that for you to make it a linear differential equation, then the coefficient of the derivative, which is dv, yes, should be 1. The coefficient here, so everything here must go. So we have to undo whatever is here. Alright? So for us to undo it, what do we have to do? You can see clearly that if you want to undo it, it's when you multiply by negative 2. When you multiply this by negative 2, you undo it for it to become 1. And for you to undo this, you have to multiply by v raised to the power 3 over 2. Because v raised to the power 3 over 2 will undo this for it to be 1. I hope you can see that. So we are going to multiply 2 by dv ds minus 
B negative half is equal to. Now watch. The idea is that the idea is not that we want to make here one, we want to make here one. The idea is that we want to make. Sorry. We have to maintain this. So the idea is that we want to make here one, we want to take here one. Why am I working to this side? We don't care. So we are just multiplying throughout. So when you multiply this by this, you will do it. Multiply this by this, you will do it. A is negative 3 over 2. So this becomes dB dS minus. Now with this, you know that this will make here plus here over 2. And when you add 3 over 2 to negative half, you are going to add, you are going to get okay, you are going to get B. You are going to get B. Alright. You are going to get B because 3 over 2 plus negative half. You are going to get what? Alright. Very good. Very good. And this will be equal to this will do this. So we are going to get that place to be negative 2. Wow! I hope you can see what we have. You see, what we have now is different from what is here or what is here. What we have now is a linear differential equation because we can identify our P of X. We can identify our P of X to be the function now is B. So we can identify our P of X to be 2. Then our P of X negative 2. Very good. So, with that, then we can go and find, which one do you like? Method 1 or method 2? Go by it. Any, any one that you like. Alright. So, let's go by the method 2. The integrating factor, which is so the integrating factor p of x is 2 ds. So we get the integrating factor to be 2 e raised to the power 2s. So that becomes the integrating factor. Alright. So we move on to the last part. We want to get a general equation and that is all. And that is So the Q of S is negative 2 multiplying the integrating factor which is this yes all this over the integrating factor all right and you can use this to cancel this integrate this first so we are gradually getting to the final answer You can see that it's not difficult. It's not difficult. Alright. So here it simplifies to Okay. So that is that. And when you integrate this, you get half e raised to the power 2s over e raised to the power 2s plus. This cancels this. Let's do it well. In the same thing, right? Okay. 
That is correct. Please cancel this. Wow. We are going to get this to be called to negative 1 plus C. Negative 1. Oh, don't forget that. That is not that. Oh, then I think we have made a mistake in solving the linear equation. Please make sure you go back. When we are solving the linear equation for the method 2, we have made a mistake there. Make sure you go ahead and correct that for me. Alright. We know that, let me, em let me emphasize on that here. E raised to the power 2x. So with this, this cancel this all right, but this will cancel this. It's all over this. So when this cancel this, you get negative e raised to the power two s plus c. So for this to go on top, it will be e raised to the power negative two s. All right. So when you simplify it, then you get negative one plus c e raised to the power negative. Alright, so this becomes this becomes the general solution for that. This becomes the general solution for that. Very good. Please, I beg you, make sure you go back and do that correction for me. Alright. Always when you are dividing, this one will affect everything there. Alright. Including this, it's not dividing only this. Okay, thank you for that. Now I'm back to ask yourself some questions. All right, so we look at our next questions. Here we have to find the solution of the following binary equations. So you can see that everything here is a binary equation. Now here, the question is specific that it's a binary equation. But what if, let's say that we have mixed it up with a linear equation. That is when you have to identify the two terms. That is one with y and secondly, another one with y raised to the power n. Whereby the n can be 2, can be 3, can be 4 or more. Alright. So when this is found, then that is a binary equation. But for a linear equation, you will only see y in it. You will only see y in it, but not y to the power of n. Alright. So looking at the first question, for instance. We have dy plus 2sy ds to be equal to s multiplying e raised to the power negative s squared y to the power 3 ds. So this y to the power 3 and this y is making this equation a binary. And when you go to the question 2, you can see y here. And in all, we have the differential thing. Alright, very good. Here we have y raised to the power 2 and y here. So this is also making that a binary equation. And also, looking at what we have here, we have y here and y raised to the power, let me check that one more. Supposed to be y raised to the power negative 2. And that is also a binary equation. And the fourth part, also, we have y in it, and also we have y. This y, the square root of y you can see here, is the same as y raised to the power half. And since this is not 1, we cannot say that it's linear, it's a binary equation. So, I may not be solving out for you, I will need you to solve about two or more, so at least two, at least two, so that you do the rest on your own. So let's first look at the first question. 
we have the y plus All right, so with this, we have the S here, the S here, and we have to get the Y here. So the only thing that we can do here is that we group like this. So we have the Y to be equal to S e raised to 1 negative S squared, Y to the power 3 dS. Then we send this to this side, minus 2 S Y dS. And we can factorize the S out. All right. Now, when you divide both sides by the S, we get the Y dS to be equal to S e raised to one negative S squared Y is equal to minus two S Y. Very good. Now we know that. With the general form of a binary equation, the one which is attaching the function which is attaching to the y will come to the left hand side of the divide here. So we get y. All right. So that is what we have. Uh, we are saying that this is not a linear differential equation, but a binary differential equation. So we need to be doing something, all right? And what is that? Please, I would like to clean the questions. Make sure you write it. So we get the standard form to be dy dx plus 2sy is equal to s e raised to the power sorry alright so we let b to be equal to e raised y 1 minus n and the n we have here is the 2 so b is equal to y raised to the power negative 1 so b is equal to 1 over y don't forget you are making y the subject so we get y is equal to 1 over b then we take the derivative of the y so the y dx now becomes negative b negative dv ds since it's implicit <coughs> since it's implicit all right so that is what we have for that part the next thing to do is to go and do substitution into the general uh, the standard form of the equation but not the question here but the standard form of the Equation of the binary of the binary. All right. So so the divide here is what we have here. Then we add it to. 2s multiplying the y and the y is y raised to 1 negative 1 then s e raised to the power negative s squared but the y we have there is y raised to 1 negative 1 b raised to the power negative 1 right now. Very good, but don't forget it's square. All right, so we now get this.
the integrating factor. Good. So this is a few of the integrating factor. When you bring the integration back or out, you get e raised to the power negative two x squared dx. All right. So this, when it adds, you get this. Now to do this, you see the fact that two functions is multiplying here doesn't mean it's going to be integration by part. But this is just u substitution because when you set this to be equal to u, it can or do that for you. Alright, let's continue. So we let u to be equal to negative two x squared. The u will be equal to negative four x dx. Alright. And dx is just going to be du over negative four x. Negative four x. Alright. So by substitution. By substitution, the ds here is du over negative four x. All right, this will cancel it. Don't forget, everything here is u, so we get negative one over four integral of e raised to the power u du. And this is going to give us negative 1 over 4. Hope you are following. E raised to the power u. Alright. So that is what we have for the integration part. So by substitution. So by substitution. The general equation is now going to we know that the integration factor is e raised to the power x squared plus c e is here. Then we break the integration, which is negative 1 over 4 e raised to the power u. And the u is negative 2 x squared. Therefore, we are going to get negative 1 over 4 e raised to the power negative 2 x squared plus c. But we are saying that the integrating factor is dividing everything. So it will be multiplied by this. So multiply by this. And when this multiply this, we have to, so you can leave it like this also. You can leave it as such. You can also multiply this throughout. And that becomes your general equation for the first question. All right. So let's look at the second part. For the second part, we are going to have Alright, so this is in a binary. This is a binary. So the first thing to do is to leave it in the standard form. Now you can see that from the question, it's already in the standard form. Identify P of S. Identify P of S. Because we will be in need of it. A, the Q of S is without the Y. Then we go for we go to let B to be equal to Y, 1 minus N. And the N here is 2. The N here is 2. So we get B to be equal to Y, negative 1. Alright? And this is going to be 1 over y, which is y is equal to 1 over b. So we get y to be equal to b raised to 1 negative 1. So dy ds is equal to negative 2, negative 2, dv, d 
Yes. So we go and do some fusion of this and this into the standard form. So we are doing a substitution. For it to be linear, then you undo, just for us here, you undo what is here. So for it to undo what is here, you have to multiply by V, V is equal to, so that you undo whatever is here. For it to affect all, for it to affect all. So when this multiplies this, you get Now, let's come back and check here. Alright, this to this, subtracting 1 from this will make that to be for 1. But here will be negative. So we get 4 over x. This will make here to be power one. Then that is that. To be power to this, also to this. So this will do this. Then here will be negative x and go up to this. So we now have a linear equation. So we go on to stop. You see, it's not difficult. Please watch me. I hope you are following me. It's not difficult. Just be in the standard form. Identify Q of S and Q of S. That is not your case or a problem to you. Then go and set your V. It's supposed to be y, y to the power of 1 minus N. In the general form, it's Y to the power of 1 minus N. So identify your N from this equation, and that is 2. Make Y the subject. Find Y to the S. There's no problem here. This is an implicit. That's why we repeat V to the S. Alright, you come and do the substitution and you get your linear equation. And we have already done that already. That's why we, without your idea in linear, you can't do the bad logic. Alright, so yeah. We find the integration factor. Which is and the P of S is negative one over S, so this negative four will come out. Yes. Alright. This is the P of S. This is the P of S. So that is that. Negative four. So we get therefore the integrating factor is S raised to the power negative four. All right. So now that the integrating factor is equal to one negative. Then we move on to Alright, watch. So here yeah, we write our general equation. 
You know, right? the integrating factor, which is so we move on to find the integration in it. The integration in it is integral of this, and this is just x because when you add this to this, oh, this is going to be negative one. Yes, and when you integrate this, you get to the new S, so I think it's the same as one of my S. Alright, so that is what we have there. Now, we go on to We go on to do our substitution, so therefore, we are doing a substitution to this. Everything we did on the integration part is minus plus C over, as I said, this is not like it to be like this. This is not like it to be like this. Plus C. No. It is plus C here, all this over the integrating factor. And this is going to give us mean f plus c, and here is x raised to power negative 4. So this is the general equation. All right, I have solved almost two questions. We have solved two questions. And in fact, here you were given an initial condition, and you know how to do that. All right, if y is equal to this, then put y to the 1, put x to the 2. Find C and let us go and do the substitution back. Let's try the last one. So that I will need one for you to try. Okay. And even that one, I may not finish with it. Okay, so we move on. dy dx plus 1 over x, y. Then you need to turn it to this side. y and the square root is 4 and a half. Very good. So looking at this, we know that our p we know that we are in that form of right. So we set b equals to y. 1 minus n, and the n is half, which is y raised to the power half. b is equal to y raised to the power half. We square root both sides. We rather square both sides so that we get this square is equal to y. All right, then we find the y ds. The y ds is going to be 2v power 3. The y ds is just going to be 2v. Then we bring the b ds. Always don't forget that. Then we go and do the substitution here. This is 2v dv dx plus 1 over x, the y is v squared is equal to v squared power half. 
All right, so we can read up 2D dv dx plus here we have 1 over s v squared is equal to v. So for us to undo this, we need to multiply by half, for us to make here, we need to multiply by half to get rid of this. Then here we will be able to find negative 1. Alright? So, So we want to get linear equation. This will do this. So we get dv ds plus. Now watch this to this. We are going to get half, and here is s to the one then this to this we get v is equal to half or this will be this so we get that to be half so now you can see that this is linear and since this is a linear equation we identify our p of s to be half s which is one negative one then our Q of S to be half. Ah, please, we are going to solve the general equation. So we are using this linear equation. So here is where you are going to identify your Q of S. Then your Q of S. All right. So you go for the integrating factor. So the integrating factor is going to be P of S is half 1 over S dS. And that is half over mouth integral of 1 over S dS. And here we get lean S. So we get lean S to the power half. We get lean S to the power Ah. All right, so that is what we have there, and this will cancel this. So we just have the integration factor to be s raised to the power half. Right. So this is. Very good. I hope you can see from the board. Let's continue. So, we have our Q of S to be half times the integrating factor. All this over the integrating factor. S to the power half. All right. So we now go on and integrate. So we bring out the integration sign, which is half out. Sorry, let's continue. All right. So here is s to the power half dx, and this is half s raised to the power 3 over 2, then we divide by 3 over 2, don't forget. And this is the same as half times 
So that, that is not the integration factor. Uh, that is the integration in it. So the general solution now becomes plus C. All this over. Alright. And we are going to get. So this becomes a general solution for that. So you can apply the initial value, the initial value. All right, so that is all for that. In our next video, we will be looking at linear equation reducible to separable. Linear equation reducible to separable. And we are going to see how that is also going to work. All right, very good. Thank you. Bye-bye.